Okay, so the e top club members, and e top Jagger enthusiasts. Um, uh, oh, uh, happy Christmas and New Year to you, by the way. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm starting to do the interior. I've got all the interior from from John Skinner, and I'm mainly doing the carpets and the uh, um, the door cards and so on. I'll do that myself, but the the seats and the hood and the centre console I'm probably going to have done professionally. But obviously, what I want to do now is strip it, strip uh, all the old stuff off the centre console. Um, and, and get it back to bare metal and paint it so at least that's done, that's, that saves a bit of money on it. Uh, and I just wanted to show you a couple of things, this is uh, the original centre console and, the, and the, it's quite thin gauge steel and what they've done is they've actually put five ply uh, wood in between, you can see where this, where this lip is here, here, and what they've done is they've put five ply pieces into it to give it I guess some rigidity otherwise it would break I guess very easily and then covered it with leather you can see in the original here they put uh, some kind of horsehair matting obviously foam is what they use nowadays but that would have been originally I'm fairly sure this is the original um, this is the center console again it's, it's quite flimsy um, even though it's got a, uh, a few pieces to try and get some rigidity but it is reasonably flimsy and what I found was this, this, this is like a a thick padded foam they've got on the side. Whether this was foam and it's just gone hard, I don't know, or whether it was more of a kind of, I don't know, PVC type foam, I'm not sure. It seems like it was thicker. But the thing to do with this is not to use any heat on it, you know, bluey, because what it'll do is it'll just burn it and then it, and, and the fumes are awful for a start off. Um, it's much easier if you just use a screwdriver and, and slowly try and prise off um, this this backing. Uh, if you go in, you can just you can basically just go on and lift it. There's only a little bit of glue on, them, uh, and that's a lot easier way of doing it. I guess if you've got some stubborn bits before you put it in your sandblaster, you want to use the heat gun for the last little bits that are stuck because you get this glue and bits of foam inside your sandblasting cabinet and it goes up through the hose, chances are you're going to block the hose off. So obviously you want to try and get all that off before you sandblast it. Or somebody else is sandblasting it, that's their problem. Um, the other thing is, is this is the uh, part of the hood and the, the hood is quite, it's fairly complex. Um, I say complex, it's not complex, but it's there's a lot of working parts to it and uh, some of them don't come apart, some of them do, so you have to be a bit careful. So I've taken loads and loads of photographs to make sure that these, that I get it back together the same way and I also have some photographs from an original 65 from a guy called John Shepherd who in, in England who has an original hood and he's t given me lots of photographs. So I have lots of data to go back to and you, as you can see the wood, this laminated wood that goes in the front I mean, it's just come apart, uh, millions of bits. But it's been on there 50 years, I guess you can't expect more. Um, the only difficult thing here to get apart was uh, these hooks. Uh, these, these, are for, um, these are for the side piece. So these, these are for here to hook, hook down from, uh, from the A pillars and lock it down onto the windscreen. And, and they're quite difficult because they're captive nuts in the back. What I did was, is I used some WD-40 and I left it penetrated for a couple of hours, two or three hours, and tried it and they were really, really stiff. So, uh, because I want to sandblast this tomorrow, I used some heat on it. So I used the bluey again, this thing's invaluable. Um, put some heat on it and, and then managed to break them, uh, well, break them, break them out not break the studs but break them out and obviously they're in such bad condition they're going to need replaced anyway so there's not much problem but the good news is it looks like I can salvage everything um, apart from the, maybe the cant rail chromes they're in a bit of a bad condition um, and obviously all the clips and little bits and bobs so anyway so that's it this is uh, I just thought I'd give you a little update about where we are um, I'm going to see the guy about the trimming on, on Thursday and uh, obviously what I'll do is I'll get the driver's seat done first 
so that I can put it in the car when I take it for the steering geometry to be done. So I can actually drive the car onto the onto the on hanger, onto the trailer, I should say, or or a winch truck, whichever way we decide to take it over there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it at the moment. But as you can see, it's uh, a lot of work. Uh, and as you can see from all these bits here, it just it just delaminated. It completely completely fell apart. I mean, this thing is reasonably thick, um, but it just splintered. Um, and this is something that you'll find with anything that's wood. They're, they're like this. The the rail that goes on the back of the E-type, um, the tack rail, uh, is made of wood, and, and they were terrible for rotten. You can imagine the water seeping into them. And now they've got a composite one, which is which is plastic. Well, it's plastic and nylon, and but it's easy to shoot air, uh, um, air not air rivets. That's the word I'm looking for again. Uh, um, oh, uh, staples, air staples into it. You couldn't do it with a staple gun, but an air staple will, will go into it. So this is something, um, in fact, I'll show you just so you can see it. This, this, is the, this is the original one. Well, not original one, but this is what would go back in it. And again, this would be wood, and you'd be back to the same situation with it rotten. Uh, and, and it's very hard. You've got to, you've got to uh, shape it a lot to get it in position, and there's two side pieces. And this is the composite one, and as you can see, it's much more flexible. And being plastic, it's easy to 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 burr to get it around the edges of the uh, the back of the uh, uh, boot area for the hood to tack into. But it's very flexible. So, in my opinion, that's that's really the way to go with that one. And as you can see, it's got a nice shape. If you look at it end on, it's got a good shape and it fits beautifully in the back. How? how well, it's going to go around the corners another matter because it's not shaped yet but anyway i just thought i'd give you an update and uh in uh, two or three days when we get these things painted up i'll i'll uh, give you another i'll do another uh, video anyway again i hope you all had a good new year and uh, thanks for looking in if you like them subscribe and uh bye for now take care bye